Hi friends, I'm Will Davis Jr. This is Good News Today. Great to see you. Happy Friday. We're in a great place here in Genesis. We're going to look at verse 24 and 25, and we're going to finish today all the preparatory work um, before God begins humans. So next week we'll get into actually creation of human beings, which is crazy. Um, we're in day five. Um, excuse me, we finished day five yesterday. We're in day six now of the creation account, and day six is gets the most activity recorded. There's a lot going on on day six. And God said, verse 24, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds and the livestock according to their kinds and everything that creeps on, excuse me, the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Um, so much here. So did you hear that five times? Repeating thing, according to their kinds, according to their kinds, according to their kinds. The Bible's never redundant by accident or because of sloppy writing. It's the inspired word of God. And when the Bible is redundant, it's for emphasis. And there's clearly a theme in the first, it's not a theme, there's clearly a principle in the first chapter of Genesis that what God created had natural limits and boundaries around it. And now that we're on the the plant, on the land and we're creating basically reptiles and mammals, um, domest from animals that be domesticated to wild animals and everything in between. It's a whole zoo of, of life that God creates here. It's, it's important to note how many times God stresses the emphasis around species. That, again, they claim that we are all evolved from one original protoplasmic something is not supported by Scripture. And again, I'm okay with the tension between the two. I think we're looking at a Genesis 3 world, and it can easily draw us, have us draw the wrong conclusions. The biblical account, claiming to be written by the author of creation, has a different order and a different emphasis, and that, that things were created in maturity, and they were created within species, and they set limits around species. It's really fascinating. Um, we have the land dwellers here now, and the table is now set for human beings. Um, notice that God does not say to the animal world that the scriptures does not say that they're blessed, and he does not say be fruitful and multiply. Now, it's very likely that the blessing extended to birds and fish was certainly extended to animals. He doesn't care less for a giraffe than he does for a bird. Um, but it's interesting that he did not say be fruitful and multiply. Twice that happens in, in the Genesis creation account, to fish and to birds and to humans. So why wouldn't he do it to animals? Well, I think it's because it's, I think it's the, the same reason God left the giants in the land when Joshua was occupying the nation of Israel, because if he pulled the humans out too fast, the animals would have taken over and have been all kinds of problems. So I think he did not command the animal world to be fruitful and multiply because he was about to make room for humans, and they were going to be the dominant species on earth. If humans weren't coming then animals could have been the dominant species on earth, but they're not. And humans were created to rule over them, which we'll see, to rule over all the earth and um, to dominate it. And so that's why I don't think he said to the animals, be fruitful and multiply. He loves them, cares about them. They have no less priority to him than um, the, the fish and the birds. In fact, they might have more priority since they were created later toward the human side of things. But he did not tell them to go fill the earth. That's important. Okay, the final thing I want you to see today before we get into human beings next week. There's no, God says again, there's, he looks at what he's done, he says, this is really good. He's made birds, he's made fish, now he's made land animals, and within their kinds, after their kinds, after their kinds, it says it 10 times, after their kinds, after their kinds. There's no survival of the fittest going on here. There's no evolutionary struggle to say who's going to prevail. God created multiple species, variants of species, put them all within their lanes, and blessed them, and there's no there's no um, transmutational battle going on to see which species is going to survive and which isn't. Certainly, there's adaptation within species, um, and there, there are certain species that didn't make it; they became extinct later after Genesis three because of various changes in, in the environment, etc. But there's no there's no waiting to see what nature is going to do or what the evolutionary forces are going to produce on the planet. It was decided in the mind of God. And it was put here 
the power of God. And all this table is now set. He's filled the skies, the stars, and the sun and moon. Now he's filled the atmosphere of birds. He's filled the seas. He's filled the land of plant life and animal life. And now the table is set for the crowning work of his creation, which we'll get into next week. And that's you and me. Wow. What a fun study. We love you, Lord. Thank you for teaching us about your, this amazing planet you've given us. Thank you for protecting us. We love you so much. We look forward to seeing what we, we're going to learn next about us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. See you next week.